I'm Jennifer Victor, uh, associate professor in the Shar School. I study American politics. I'm really interested in the talk that Mary Ellie gave, and I kind of want to not give my presentation and talk more about Puerto Rico because I think it's so hyper relevant and interesting, interesting to our current politics. Um, but Bassam kindly invited me to participate in a way that really has nothing to do with my uh, research expertise, which is uh, more on Congress and campaign finance and political parties in the United States but rather uh, an experience that I had uh, while on a family vacation uh, in, in August of 2017. So my family and I, um, my husband and I decided to take our two young children on our first abroad trip with them. So he and I always traveled a lot um, individually and together, but with, uh, with the kids, we've traveled mostly domestically. So where should we go? Where are we going to take them? And we picked Barcelona because um, we thought that uh, Barcelona was a really nice, you know, it's just across the pond, right? Like for an international trip, it's actually not that far. You can get direct flights from DC to Barcelona. And it's just a wonderful city with lots of great activities and beaches and history and art and, um, you know, some exposure to, to culture and so forth. So we decided it would be a great family vacation. Um, so we uh, decided to go to, to Barcelona in uh, August of 2017. So it's in the Catalonia region of Spain, right there on the Mediterranean coast. And if you know anything about Spain or Spanish politics, Catalonia has sort of, it, there's a bit of a separatist movement there and they kind of had their own politics going on at the time. There was a referendum. We got to see some campaigning going on uh, in, in the streets a bit. So um, these are my kids. Uh, Julia is uh, now age 12, but she was uh, 11, I guess, then. Um, and Adam is uh, seven now, so he was six during the trip. Uh, and that's my husband, Rob. And we spent the week traveling all around the city. But the day after we arrived, on the afternoon of August 17th, there was this terrorist attack. Um, and the terrorist attack targeted tourists. So it was a van that drove into a crowd of tourists um, on a street known as La Rambla. So La Rambla um, is this key uh, street in Barcelona that starts kind of towards the center of the city, through the main touristy areas and the Gothic, like the, the old parts of the city um, uh, that goes all the way down to the, to the port where there's some more tourist activities and aquarium and stuff like that. So it's a major tourist attraction and there's markets and there's, uh, there's all kinds of like street performers that my kids enjoyed interacting with. Um, and it's just, uh, and, and there's stalls on the, on the street for markets and all kinds of stuff. Um, so it's a big tourist attraction. Um, and so we spent a decent amount of time uh, on this street. So it was disturbing, right? So this is a picture taken on La Rambla. So you can see like there's cafes and vendors and so forth. Um, and the attack was, uh, this is the day after, maybe two days after the attack, I guess. Um, and it was right uh, just north of where we were on that, on that street. Um, and this is towards the end of the street down by the, down by the port. Um, so, but... So we went to La Rambla a couple of days after the attack, and there was just this incredible outpouring all along the boulevard, you know, and it's for like a mile um, of these just pop-up um, uh, memorials to the victims who died in the attack, and uh, messages of peace, and lots and lots of candles, um, and things written in all uh, different, lots of Spanish, but lots of other languages and so forth represented. Um, you know, Barcelona is a very international city. Um, and it attracts a very international um, tourist set of visitors. Uh, so it was just really kind of a, a touching moment. And then the other, the other thing that we noticed that happened was a couple of days after that, we visited La Rambla again because it was kind of in the neighborhood where we were staying. Um, there was this um, organized, so the, the pop-up memorials were spontaneous, right? Um, but after, a few days after that, there was this very organized um, taxi demonstration, essentially, where between the hours of, I don't remember what it was, but like 11 to noon or whatever it was on this one particular day, um, it, 
people get around Barcelona a lot by taxi, so it's very common to have taxis all over the city. Um, they uh, essentially, all the taxis in the city agreed that they weren't going to pick up passengers and they were just going to drive up and down uh, La Rambla, honking their horns, and it was like a parade. Um, and it was very much, it was odd in a way, because to me it was like a, a strategy you would use in social protest. Um, but in, in this instance, it was being used as a way to create solidarity, right? It was a connection of a common experience between people. I'm not sure why the taxis, I don't exactly understand what the connection was there, but it was a way, I mean, the, the taxi drivers are obviously really involved in the tourism um, and have a, a strong connection to all the tourists. Um, but it was, uh, it was almost like a celebratory moment, but it was also a... Uh, down with terrorism, we're not going to let this ruin our lives or our economy or our vacations um, kind of moment. Um, so it, it definitely had a profound impact on the way my family and I experienced our family vacation. Um, and uh, so I, I got to have lots of conversations with my young children about what is terrorism and why can't we go up in the towers in La Sagrada Familia because they're closed now for security reasons. And so we talked about um, both domestic and international uh, violence and so forth. So it was it was a teaching moment and an opportunity to uh, have these uh, difficult discussions with my kids, but also an opportunity to show that we are going to go and do what we were going to do anyway. Like we didn't change our itinerary in any way. We didn't change our plans. Um, and the outpouring of sort of connection from the Spanish community there was really um, a very memorable thing to just experience that sort of common humanity. Um, so I don't have a real political science lesson. I just have a vacation story, really, <laughs> which is why I kind of want to learn more from Mary Ellie and, and talk about Puerto Rico. Um, but it was a, a real international event that disrupted our family vacation. So happy to share it. Thank you so much. Can I ask, did the Barcelona municipality do anything to make sure that the tourists wouldn't all flee? I mean, was there any, you know, were there messages in hotels, it's okay, you can stay? Or no. People just made individual choices of just, I mean, uh, we saw increased security. So uh, for those of you that have been outside the United States, it's not uncommon in other countries to seek security uh, carrying machine guns or other heavy armor, you know, armory that you wouldn't, you don't usually see in the United States. Um, uh, so we definitely saw an increased police presence. Um, and the, the day of the attack, it was just really eerie, like this bustling, crowded, you know, social part of the city that we were staying in was all of a sudden dead silent. Like, and we, like, we didn't have any food. Like, we had to go out to dinner. We were a little bit afraid to. Like, it was, it was really eerie, <laughs> the way everything just kind of shut down. But within a day, like, things just kind of bounced right back. Yeah. I think I'll break the class on food. No, actually, she does have.